Hey everybody, welcome back. I uh, Today we're going to install the uh, stripes on our CBX projects. And I've got two tanks here. One of them on the left is an NOS tank that the stripes were installed by the factory, of course. And the one on the right is the... Uh, the one on the left I'm going to put on the uh, Left for Dead CBX that I'm restoring that's been featured in most of the videos. And the one on the right uh, belongs to a customer's bike. And uh, obviously I'm going to be putting the stripes on on uh, the one here uh, on the left. So anyway, uh, we'll start out by showing you the stripes. These are reproduction stripes. But I get them from AFE Graphics in Canada, and they do a superb job on the stripes. Uh, they're all perfect uh, replicas of the factory. And uh, the only one that you have to trim a little bit is on the tail section, which I'll show you that as the uh, videos progress. So anyway, if you get the complete set, you get every single uh, decal that is on the bike, including the tank and the uh, side cover and the uh, the side covers and the tail section and everything. So uh, as you can see here, the stripes are made up of they're they're sandwiched in between a uh, base paper and a piece of paper that covers the top of them. And so you start out by, you start with the top stripe on the gas tank, like I'm showing here. And if you get the tank painted properly, like it was from the factory, you'll see that there's an angle to the black stripe and it stops short of the uh, leading edge of the tank. And the stripes are cut exactly to that same angle. So I don't know if you can see it here, but you can see that the stripe has an angle to it and it should be the same angle or very close to the angle of your black stripe. Now, you know, not all the tanks from the factory were dead perfect because, you know, each tank had, you know, the stripes installed by different people. So uh, anyway, we'll try to get it, uh, you know, lined up as close as possible. Now, well, one thing about these stripes is that they are all uh, cut exactly to the correct angle and to follow the contour of the tank. So rather than try to fight the stripe when you're installing it, you just let it lay naturally. And uh, again, I'll kind of go over that as, as we progress here. But, you know, you kind of start at the edge there get it lined up, and then you just let it lay naturally across. So, so the first thing I do when I first start is I wipe the tank clean of any dust or dirt that might be on it. And by the way, when you get the tank back from the body shop, you want it to be wet sanded dull, just like you see here, because the stripe only adheres to the dull finish. Then you get a, uh, like a, a body shop uh, uh, spatula, so to speak. And then you peel the back off the stripe, just like, just like this, I'm peeling the back off. And then the, you leave the front paper on, or the top piece on. And the back of the stripe kind of has a sticky, tacky, uh, you know, side to it. Then you take your little body uh, spatula thingy. You kind of want it rubbery and flexible, just like that. And then, again, you wipe the tank off of any dirt or dust. And in this case, I'm going to start with the uh, decal that goes on the top of the tank that calls out for the 24 valves. And it it's roughly about a half inch down from the uh, from the reveal there at the top of the tank. And none of the tanks were exactly in the same location. I mean, they're really close, but not exact. So, you know, you shouldn't fret over exactly where it's located. But anyway, you start with a very, very soapy water. And I put it in a 
in a uh, spray bottle because that way I know that the water is uncontaminated. You know, you don't want to have a bowl of water or anything because it could collect dirt or whatever. So I put it in a spray bottle, just like you see. Then you peel the back off, just like that. And again, it's kind of tacky, like tape. But you go ahead and you soak the, the decal as much as possible. The more water, the better. And the more soapy, the better. Because you don't want it to... Once it sticks, you can't move it around. But with the soapy water, you can move it around and so on. So I start by kind of moving it around in the soap to make sure that, you know, it's I can still move it around. So then you just kind of locate it where you need to and you kind of press back and forth with your fingers to get any air bubbles or whatever out. Then you use your uh, spatula and you very gently just kind of push any water that's underneath there out. And as you do that, the, uh, the decal will then adhere to the tank or the paint. And again, it's very important that the paint be very dull. You don't want any glossy areas of the paint, otherwise it won't stick. So once, you're, once you kind of squeegee it out and dry it off with a paper towel, again, you just kind of dab at it and rub it lightly. You don't want to move the decal. Then you can peel off the top paper, just like I'm doing here. And just do it very, very slowly. And as you do it, you kind of watch for bubbles. And if you see any bubbles, then you take your spatula and you kind of squeeze them out. Now, in this case, there were no bubbles, so I'm really not going to worry about it too much. Just kind of dry it off. And there it is. So one, And now it's all dried, no bubbles, and it's stuck very, very securely. Now, after we get all these stripes on, then you hand it back to the body shop and they'll clear over it. So after I'm done here, then I'll, then I'll uh, give it back to the paint department and they'll clear over it and it'll be like a brand new tank. So it's good to start with that top decal to kind of get a feel for what you're doing because it's small and it's easy. So then I always start with the top stripe first because the, stop, the, the top stripe establishes the exact location of where you will put the bottom stripe. And I'll go over that when we get to it. So first of all, you soak the tank as much as possible. The more water, the better. Then you peel the back off the stripe. You just peel it all the way off. Then I squirt the, the back of the stripe, the tacky side of the stripe, get it as wet as possible. And then I just kind of lay it on the tank and, and rub it around to get it, make sure that there aren't any dry spots on the, uh, on the stripe. And you just keep squirting the, as much water and soap on there as you can. You do not want to have any dry spots. Then you line up that angle in the front of the stripe with your paint line in the front of the tank. And I'll show you that when I install the next, the 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 other front stripe or the other top stripe uh, later on in the video. You'll see what I'm talking about. So once you get that lined up, then again, like I said before, you just lay the stripe down and let it lay naturally. You don't want to you don't want to try to fight the angle or the curve or anything the way the stripe is cut because it's cut exactly the way it should be to just lay it down naturally. Now you just, you, you do have to kind of work it a little bit, but you try to lay it, you try to let the stripe establish where it's gonna lay. If 
following the, the body line there. And again, I'll go over that a little bit more in detail on the next stripe when the tank is turned around the other direction. Then I look at it, and if, it's, if you need to adjust it, because of how wet it is, you can peel it right back up again and readjust it like I'm doing here. Maybe it needed to be straightened up more or whatever. That's why you always want to keep the tank and the stripe as wet as possible and as soapy as possible. Then when it gets down to the bottom there, you just kind of press it up against the body reveal and then just kind of rub it with your finger to make sure that there aren't any air bubbles. Then you take your spatula and you just kind of lightly rub it to try to squeeze the water out from underneath. And if you're happy with the way it's, it lays, then you just want to keep squeegeeing it out as much as possible to get it kind of semi-dry and so that the ad adhesion, you know, takes, uh, takes hold. And then that way, when you peel up the, uh, the top paper, it's not going to pull the stripe up. So you just kind of make sure all the bubbles are out of there. Just keep squeegeeing it until you're pretty confident that it's laying flat. So then once that's done, then you can start peeling the top paper off, just like I'm starting here. And you kind of want to, as you peel it off, you kind of want to press down on the stripe to make sure that it's laying flat. And you want to you want to peel the paper off horizontally like I'm doing here. That way you lessen the chance of it pulling the stripe up. And then, you know, you may see a bubble here and there that you then just take the squeegee and just kind of press it out of there. Like I'm doing here. Just keep doing it, keep pressing down. Now, later on in the video, you'll see that I'm using the squeegee to do this where I'm doing my finger now, and it's almost better to use your squeegee to do this. But this one was looking pretty good, so that's why I just felt like I could use my finger here. So then once you get down to the bottom, you just go ahead and pull the paper off and let the end of the stripe kind of flow out in the breeze. And then you want to make sure that you press down at the crease there. Then once, it's, once it adheres to the crease, then you press it up underneath the tank. And that's the way they did it from the factory. You want it to just kind of disappear under the tank like that because then the seat will cover it up. And you don't have any leading edge on the stripe then. So then once that's done, you just kind of wipe it with the paper towel again. Get it all nice and dry. And that's it for that stripe. So then again, you just make sure it's perfectly dry because then when you start doing the other stripes and you wet the tank again, you don't want the water to get underneath this stripe. So you want to just make sure it's perfectly dry before you start on the other stripe. It only takes a couple of minutes to dry. So as long as you just keep wiping it with the paper towel and pressing down, you should be good.
So then on the other stripe here, I'll show you how to get it started. And as before, you line up the angled edge of the stripe, soak the tank, And as I mentioned before, it's important you do the top stripes first because they establish where you put the bottom stripes, which you'll see when we get to it. You can never have enough water on the tank. Then you take your angled end, again, peel the stripe, get it nice and soaking wet. And then line it up. Now what I do is, the stripe is, is orange and gold, so I the, the line between the orange and the gold, I try to line it up with the, with the black, where the black stripe and the red come together. Then that way I know that the edge of the black and the red are going to be directly under the stripe. So I just kind of try to line it up just like that between the gold and the orange and then line it up with that black and I kind of let it get adhered there. And that establishes where the stripe begins. Then I kind of line up the rest of the stripe so that it lays naturally f with its natural uh, curve, curvature, and so on. I mean, it's a little intimidating at first, but, you know, once you get the hang of it, it's pretty easy. And you, you just don't fret about it. You just don't worry about it. You just do it. And as I mentioned, you just try to get that first few inches adhered so it establishes you know, which direction the stripe's going. And once you get that, then it's pretty easy after that. Then you just peel the rest of the stripe. And you want to kind of keep your fingers wet, too, so that they don't stick to the stripe. So now you just, you just allow the stripe to lay naturally, like I mentioned before. And you can see why it's important to keep it wet, because if you have to readjust it, then it's easy to do, like I'm doing here. I've had to readjust it a couple times here. And you have to really pay attention to the stripe and not the paper because a lot of times the paper is cut crooked. So you just have to keep your eye on the actual stripe itself. So then once you get it lined up, then you go ahead and squeegee it again. Now you'll see here in a minute that the front edge of the stripe in this side 
is not quite right, and I've had to I've had to bring the stripe back up again to correct it, and you'll see why here in a second. So when I peel the paper up, I'm noticing that there's a big air bubble right at the curve right there where my finger is going back and forth right now. So it's, it's evident that the front of the stripe is at a different angle than the rest of it. So you'll see here now where I have to peel that stripe up a little bit. And you can kind of see the bubble there as I'm trying to work it out, but it, it's not working out. So what you have to do is you have to make sure, again, your everything is soaking wet. And again, I, and I'm trying to get the bubble out, but it's not working. So I realize that I'm going to have to peel the stripe back up again, just in the front. And you'll see it's pretty easy if if uh, if you do it right so at that point you just kind of very very carefully with your spatula bring the stripe back up and I only need to bring it up to where my finger is and this is why it's important to keep everything wet because if ever if it were dry there's no way I could get this back up again so I bring it back up to where the bubble was. Get it all nice and wet again. And then just let it lay naturally. And that's it. So then I can go ahead and peel the rest of it off. And as I mentioned before, it's easier if you just use the spatula when you're peeling the tape because you can see here any bubble that may occur, I can push it along. And by the way, I'm using a oil drip pan, as you can see there, which is great because then you don't worry about the water dripping down on it or anything like that. So really works well. You can get them at any auto parts store. Then you wipe it dry with the paper towel again, like I mentioned before. And any little minor bubble, you can squeegee it out of there early on. But again, if you wait too long, then you've got a bubble. And if you do end up with a bubble, you just take a pin and punch a hole in it. And usually that straightens it up, but um, not always. So that's it on the top stripes. As you can see, they, they're looking really great, and the tank is starting to look really nice. They line up nicely with the black. Now, a lot of people run the black all the way to the edge, and it just simply doesn't look right. But it does go all the way to the edge at the bottom. So so the reason that you start with the top stripes first is because the bottom stripe now ha also has that same angle on it. And 
a lot of people connect the stripes and that is not correct. They were not connected from the factory. They were anywhere from a quarter to three quarters of an inch away. There is a low break there. And the stripes are cut so that they run relatively parallel with the front of the tank, just like that. And here again is the NOS tank. And as you can see, the stripes are separated, runs relatively uh, parallel to the edge. Then when it gets down to the bottom, it's irregular to the edge, bottom edge of the tank. So you don't try to follow exactly the bottom line of the tank because the stripe is made to line up with the edge of the top stripe, just like that, separated away. And then it just falls naturally to the, to the shape of the stripe and not to the shape of the tank. So you just want to let the stripe lay naturally when you're locating it. And the important thing is you locate it in the front there properly. So the process is the same and it's a little harder on the side because the water just keeps dripping down and you have to just really keep wetting the tank. So as you can see there, I'm, I'm allowing, before I even peeled the back of the tape, I'm, I'm laying it out and just by nature of the fact that the water is wet there, the stripe kind of sticks there. That way I can kind of get an idea of where the stripe is going to end up based on it lining up in the front. So once you do that, then you go ahead and peel the, get it located in the front. Then you peel the stripe. Again, this is really important on the bottom stripe to keep it as wet as possible because you just have to keep adjusting it and adjusting it accordingly. And you'll see here, I, I I adjust it a number of times before I get it to the point where it's correct. And as I mentioned, you can take 10 tanks from the factory and they're all going to be different as far as exact location of the stripe is concerned. But it's important to just let the stripe establish its own route. Now, at the back here, where the stripe has a kind of a dog leg to it, you do have to make sure the stripe is above the, the uh, reveal line there. So after a couple of tries, you know, I got it right, and then you can start squeegeeing it like before. You just keep it wet. Because again, you want it, you still want it to be soaking wet while you're squeegeeing it in case you hit a bubble, and then that way it squeegees out really easily when it's still wet. And as you squeegee in that direction, you you know, sometimes you can kind of see the stripe underneath moving along with the squeegee. And the important thing is you just, again, don't fret over whether it's straight with the body line. You just want the stripe to lay where it establishes its own location because it does not line up with the edge of the tank. Now, some of the later tanks from Honda, they actually connected the stripes and it's it's not it's not correct and it doesn't look right bike wasn't designed like that As you peel this paper, 
again, it's you just do it very, very slowly and make sure that you're not pulling the stripe up because that'll that'll create a air bubble as well. And once you're con con confident that all the bubbles are out, then you just dry it as much as you can. And that's it for the bottom stripe. Looks better than my NOS tank. Now it's time to do the Super Sport logo. And the, the top of the Super Sport logo, the very top of the letters are seven eighths of an inch from the center of the screw hole. So I just kind of eye it to make sure that I get an idea of exactly where it is. Then you take the U and Super and you kind of center it with that first screw hole. And that's where it should be, just like that. So then once you kind of take a mental picture of the distance there, then you go ahead and install it with the same process that we did with the uh, stripes. And you can kind of take the tape measure and get a rough idea of where seven eighths of an inch is. And then adjust the decal accordingly. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it's somewhere in that general area. Because then once you put the Honda logo, uh, emblem on there, then the Super Sport is located properly. And that's it. So then you squeegee, dry it off. And you're done with that. And as you can see, the water is down on the stripe, which is fine because now the stripe is completely adhered. So then on the tail section, the stripes from Canada are really great, but the, 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 uh, the point that it comes to is not quite correct. So I trim it just ever so slightly to give it a more smooth uh, where the stripe comes to a point. I just kind of cut the edge a little bit to make it a little more of a smooth 
uh, transition there. Just like that, and then uh, it's a little more accurate. Because the stripe is supposed to diminish to nothing, but the, the stripe kit, they, they kind of end abruptly, a little bit too abruptly. So I trim it a little bit to make it a more of a gradual point. So then I start with that point, try to center it there. And then uh, just like the rest of the stripes, you just let it lay naturally. Now on this one, at the bottom of the tail section, there is a, uh, a, a circular reveal down there. And the stripe has to go down to where the very edge of the stripe is right at that apex of the cutout. And it's easy to put them on so that it's below that apex, but you really don't want it that way. You want it just above it. And as you can see there, it's right above that apex right there where my thumb is. And in this case, I believe that I had to readjust it. So then once you establish the end, the end of it right there, then you have to take a little pair of scissors and cut the stripe. So as you can see here, I'm readjusting it because it it was too it was below that apex of that cutout right there. So I had to readjust it. So then once you get that all done, then you cut it to length. and then squeegee it. And peel it. And that's it. Then you just wrap the stripe around the front just like you did on the tank. And the top, the top stripes on the tail section are pretty easy. Again, you just do the same process that we've been doing. They're pretty easy because they're straight, short, and it's a pretty easy process. But you do want to wrap it around the back
just like I'm showing there. And the other one, and again, these are easy to, to flip the wrong way. You want to make sure that the orange is against the black and not the gold. Then you put the Honda on the back. And the Honda one is very, very tricky because each letter is separated. So each letter is separate. Now, if you mess up, there is no line realigning those letters properly. So you, if you mess up, then you've ruined the, the decal and you have to start over. So you have to be really careful. You have to make sure it's centered properly. And then when you're peeling the paper off, as you'll see here, you have to really be careful because, like I said, each letter is separated and you're peeling the paper off each letter individually. So if one of those letters comes up and you get it crooked, then you're, you've messed it up. That's it. That's it for the tail section. And that's it for the stripes. So, and that's going to be it for the video. So, uh, thank you for watching. And as always, please like, share, and, uh, and subscribe. And thank you for watching. And uh, the next video, we will be doing the alternator. Uh, rebuilding the alternator and installing it in the engine. And then I will also be catching the customer bike engine up. Uh, so the next video we should have, I should have both bikes uh, sitting side by side and then we'll continue the build on both of them at the same time. So uh, again, thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel.